Ahoy there, you glorious bunch of life jacket loving legends. It's Shelby here, your ocean faring truth teller, your bridge deck buddy, and your chief officer of what on earth is going on down there. Today we're talking about the ocean floor. That strange landscape we sail over every day, pretend we understand but mostly ignore unless something starts vibrating under our feet. But guess what? It's shaping our entire voyage like Poseidon's personal racetrack. And before we plunge in, don't forget to check out our other deep sea dramas like Tides Explained by a Cruise Officer, Waves Swell, and Significant Wave Height, and How Meteorologists Forecast the Ocean, all part of your survival guide to not looking silly at sea. All right, let's get muddy. The seafloor isn't just a flat, soggy pancake. It's got more texture than a hipster cafe menu. We're talking seamounts and giant underwater volcanoes. Some are taller than Mount Everest if you count from their base. Mid-ocean ridges, these are literally underwater mountain ranges that circle the globe. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge, over 10,000 miles long, longer than the Great Wall of China, just wetter. Trenches, the Mariana Trench is the deepest place on Earth. If you dropped Mount Everest into it, the summit would still be under two kilometers of water. That's not a fun diving trip, folks. Abyssal Plains, flat, featureless areas of the ocean floor, Great place for laying submarine cables and losing shipping containers forever. You might think, why should I care about geology? I'm here for the buffet. But trust me, the shape of the ocean floor affects everything, from how your cruise feels to whether your dinner stays on your plate. Sailing over shallow water is like driving a bus through a speed bump graveyard. When swell hits shallow areas like continental shelves, the wave slows down, piles up, and suddenly, boom, your gentle cruise turns into a low-key roller coaster. The wave height can double or triple in minutes, especially when approaching places like the English Channel, Dutch Coast, or those picturesque but suspiciously bumpy Caribbean ports. Also, shoaling. This is when waves get taller and slower in shallower depths. It's like they're hitting the brakes and flipping over themselves. Ship squat, not what it sounds like. It's when a ship sailing in shallow water actually sinks a bit lower due to pressure differences. No, really, you can lose up to two meters of clearance depending on your speed and draft. True story. We once had to delay docking in Norway because swell over the fjord's shallow edge was sending coffee mugs flying like cruise missiles in the crew mess. So, yeah, the seafloor matters. Now let's talk about seamounts, the introverts of the volcano family. These underwater giants lurk below, totally submerged, but they create upwellings, currents that drag cold, nutrient-rich water up from the deep. Result? A feeding frenzy for plankton, fish, whales, and oh yes, the giant squid. These areas become biodiversity hotspots and marine protected zones. Which means, drumroll please, we slow down or reroute to avoid harming precious wildlife. Take Monterey Bay in California or the Azores in the Atlantic. Stunning places above the water, but even more fascinating below. It's basically the aquatic version of a rave down there. And if you're wondering, hitting one of these with a ship is bad. Very bad. Which is why we avoid shallow seamounts like the plague, or like a passenger with norovirus. Ah yes, the trenches, the drama queens of the seabed. These are subduction zones where tectonic plates do their slow motion wrestling match and cause earthquakes, tsunamis, sea level anomalies and bridge officers checking their underwear. The 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, triggered by a slip in the Sunda Trench, over 230,000 lives lost. That's why we monitor seismic data 24 seven and why ports and tsunami zones have layered evacuation protocols. Trenches are also where deep sea creatures live that would terrify even David Attenborough. We're talking fish with transparent heads, pressure proof bodies and glow in the dark lures. Basically, the stuff of nautical nightmares. So yes, even if your cruise is floating serenely on the surface, the trench beneath might be plotting a sequel. Sandbanks are basically nature's way of saying, gotcha, they just pop up, shift around, and honestly, they seem to laugh at our GPS. That's why you'll often hear someone say, check the echo sounder again. Is that 20 meters or two? In places like the Bahamas, the North Sea, or the Florida Keys, Sandbanks can change faster than a guest's mood after running out of drink coupons. Dredging happens all the time, but even then, charts can lag behind what's actually out there. And yes, ships have definitely run aground. In 2012, the Costa Concordia struck a reef, 
not a sandbank but still avoidable seabed terrain. Could something like the Costa Concordia happen again today? Well, let's just say technology has improved, but human error hasn't gone extinct. So yes, if the crew ignores procedures, shows off near shore, or misreads the seabed, history could absolutely repeat itself. That's why we made a whole video on it. Go give it a watch and find out how close we still sail to disaster. The Queen Elizabeth II once hit a rock off Martha's Vineyard, causing millions in damage, all because of poor understanding of local bathymetry. So next time you feel the ship make a weird zigzag maneuver, we're probably just tiptoeing over a grumpy sand dune. So why does all this matter? Well, this soggy underwater terrain actually controls your ride quality. Less rocking means more mojito sipping, right? It also affects navigation decisions, like why we take that weird curve on a sea day. It's about marine life protection too. Cue the cute whale shots in your mind. Then there's fuel efficiency. Shallow water means more drag, which means more money spent. And of course, emergency planning, because sometimes Poseidon just has opinions. Plus, let's be honest, knowing about the seabed instantly makes you the most interesting person at the bar. Oh, you're worried about the waves? Actually, that's due to a coastal shoal interacting with an offshore trench system. Boom, married by morning. Next time you're on a cruise and you feel the ship start doing the cha-cha, even though the forecast is calm, don't blame the weather. Blame that mischievous underwater ridge channel or shallow bank that just decided to play footsie with our hull. Hey, if you learned something new or just enjoyed my ocean floor therapy session, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell like a lifeboat drill in the rain. Check out our other episodes, How Tides Really Work, the moon's love letter to the sea, waves and swell, what's rocking your world at 3 a.m., and can you refuse to do a muster drill and live to tell the tale? I'm Shelby, Chief Officer Safety, lover of seabeds, professionally of course, and your guide to the secret life beneath your cruise. You've been watching the Cruise Ship Safety and Security Channel. Until next time, keep your keel even, your eyes on the sonar, and your heart anchored to safety.